In this video, we use Network Watcher Network Security Group Diagnostics to troubleshoot Azure networking. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. In this video, we use Network Watcher Network Security Group or NSG Diagnostics to troubleshoot Azure networking. Before that, please like and subscribe and share with a friend. That helps grow this channel. Also check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365, and hybrid identities with Windows AD and Azure AD on Udemy.com. The links are below. And thanks to my channel members, your support is appreciated. Back to it, a network security group applies inbound and outbound restrictions on traffic at subnets and network interface cards in Azure. Check out one of my previous videos to learn more about NSGs. The link is below or on the screen. NSGs have a set of inbound and outbound rules that apply at the subnet, network interface, or both. It can be difficult to troubleshoot networking issues in Azure when multiple complex NSGs are applied to the traffic flow. NSG Diagnostics is a tool we can use to troubleshoot those issues. I previously did a video on Network Watcher IP Flow Verify. There are some overlaps between these two products. While IP Flow will show if a connection is allowed or denied based on network security groups, NSG Diagnostic gives a more advanced view of the NSGs to identify where traffic is getting blocked. We'll jump into the demo in just a second. In the example coming up, there's a VM that was just deployed with an NSG at the NIC, and there's another one at the subnet. Keep in mind that NSGs are evaluated at the subnet first, then at the NIC. The first rule that matches applies, and no further action is taken. When you change a rule on an NSG, it can take a few seconds for that change to take effect. Keep that in mind if you're making changes and don't see the results you expect. We'll use the portal in the demo coming up, but there's also options for the Azure CLI and PowerShell. This is helpful if you want to include NSG diagnostics in any type of automation, or if you just prefer working in the shell. Let's jump into Azure and get started. Here we are in the Azure portal. I just deployed a new VM in Azure. This is the network security group applied to that computer's NIC. It allows TCP port 3389 inbound from anywhere. That's the RDP port. We should be able to connect to this computer and log in remotely. Let's give it a try. Login fails to the public IP address of that virtual machine. We need to figure out what's going on. At this point, we could start digging through the network security groups, but let's use the NSG Diagnostics tool instead. Let's go to Network Watcher. Go to NSG Diagnostics. We'll select our target computer. That's the VM we're trying to log into. Notice we have additional options, including network interfaces and application gateways. We'll select virtual machine and select that new virtual machine we're trying to log into. We'll go to protocol. RDP is a TCP protocol. The connection is inbound to the target computer. We could add my computer's public IP address as the source but let's add the internet service tag. This includes all public IP addresses. NSG Diagnostics set the destination IP of the public IP address of that VM, and we'll add port 3389, the RDP port. Let's run the diagnostics. It shows the connection is denied at the first test. That's the network security group applied to the subnet. The network security group applied to the VM's network interface is allowed, but the processing order is first the subnet NSG, then the network interface NSG. So the connection is blocked at the subnet. We'll fix that in a minute, but let's take a look at something else quick. Let's change the protocol to any and run the test again. Now, both the subnet and network interface network security groups are showing blocked. Why is that? It's because the rule that allows RDP in on the network interface specifies TCP, not any. Let's take a look at that. Here's the inbound rules on that network security group. And if we expand rule 300, it shows it allows RDP in, but the protocol is TCP, not any. Any is not a wildcard. It's specifying any. Let's go to the subnets network security group. The subnets called IP flow test two. 
Let's go to the inbound security rules. We'll add a rule. We'll use any as the source with a wildcard for the source port. Destination is also any and the service is RDP. That sets TCP port 3389. And this is off topic, but I have to add it. Opening an RDP port to the internet is a bad idea. I'm just doing this for an example. The most secure option in Azure is using Azure Bastion. An alternative to Azure Bastion is to change the source to a specific IP address using a slash 32 subnet mask. So we can change it to IP address and it shows some examples. You could even do my IP address. That will use the IP address of the computer you're working on. Now only that IP address has the ability to RDP into computers on that subnet. We'll change it back to any for this example. We'll leave the action to allow and add. That was added. Let's test the NSG again. We'll go back to Network Watcher. NSG Diagnostics. And we'll run the same test. Protocol is TCP. It's an inbound connection. The source port is a service tag. The service tag is the internet. And if you did add an IP address in the rule that we just created, you'll need to update the source with that information. The destination port is 3389. And we'll run diagnostics. Now it's allowed. Let's test it and see if it works. We'll try to RDP to that computer. And that works. Let's take a look at another example. Now that we can log into the computer, we want to go to an internal website. For the sake of this example, let's say users on this computer should be able to go to websites hosted on an internal web server, but not a public web server. We don't want this computer to have access to public websites. Let's open a web browser and see what we can access. Let's go to a public website. Okay, that's blocked and that's what we want. No access to a public website. Now let's go to an internal website. We'll go to the website at 10.10.10.4. This is a Windows server I set up just for this example. It has IIS running, but it looks like we're having a problem. That doesn't work. Now we need to figure out what that problem is. Let's go to Network Watcher. Here we are in Network Watcher. Let's go to NSG Diagnostics. We'll select the target VM. NSG Diag for this example. That's the computer we were just on. We'll leave the protocol to any. And this is an outbound connection. The IP address is 10.10.15.5. The local IP address of the target computer. Let's set the destination address to 8.8.8.8. .8 That's a Google DNS server. I'm just using that as an external IP for testing the NSG. It's easy for me to remember. We don't need a working web page for this test. Just an external IP. We'll add destination port 80 and run the diagnostics. It shows a deny action on the network interface. Let's try port 443, the SSL port next. It shows the same deny action. Let's view the details. We have a match on one of the rules. Let's see how that's configured. Rule 310 says that any source port or protocol and any destination and port 443 is blocked. Let's look at the other rule. Rule 100. That didn't apply, but it's the same for port 80. That's why the other test failed. These rules are blocking all outbound HTTP and HTTPS web traffic, but we want internal web traffic. Rule 65,000 will allow VNet to VNet traffic but the flow doesn't make it that far. Let's modify the rules to meet our requirements. We'll open the network security group applied to the NIC. Go to outbound security rules. 
let's first open up the rule that blocks port 80. Instead of a destination of any, let's change that to a service tag. We'll leave the destination service tag as internet. That includes traffic to the public internet. Let's save and do the same for the port 443 rule. That's rule 310. Destination is a service tag and internet. And save. Now that we've updated the rules, let's go back and test again with the NSG diagnostic tool. We'll select the VM. Protocol any. Outbound. The IPv4 address is the IP address of the target VM. 10.10.15.5. The destination IP will be 8.8.8.8. .8 Again, just a somewhat random public IP address. And we'll set the destination port to port 80. And run the test. And we'll scroll down. Access is denied. Let's take a look at the details. The first rule match. That was expected because we're trying to access a website on the public internet. Let's go back. For the destination IP address this time, let's add the IP address of our internal web server. 10.10.10.4. We'll run NSG Diagnostics. It shows it's allowed. Let's view the details. It shows it's matching on the VNet to VNet rule. Rule 65,000. We'll go back. We could do the same for port 443, but the rules are almost identical. We'll get the same results. Let's go to the server and see if it actually works. Let's try our internal web server. 10.10.10.4 for this example. And that works. Let's open up another tab. This time we'll go to a public website. And that fails. That's exactly how we configured this. That is how we use Network Watcher NSG Diagnostics to troubleshoot network security group rules. I hope this helps you better understand troubleshooting network security groups. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.